okay, you know, whatever the, whenever there's a reaction, you know, uh, to anything, it doesn't really matter what you're reacting to, or, or how intense the feeling is, how, how minor or major it is, there's a reaction that's occurring, and then, as Seuss was saying, it's, but, the, but what's really going on for me? What is my lesson in this? In other words, to just stop at the reaction, or try to figure out the, the reaction, or analyze the reaction, or talk about the reaction, or whatever, is not going to really bring about the healing. So that's what I think all of these stories have started off with, with that, and, and Suze was describing it so descriptively, and then uh, coming much further inward, where, where it's like, okay, there is a lesson for me here. If I'm contracted in any way, you know, there is a, there's a big opportunity. She, Suze used the words, get to the bottom of it. Okay, here's the reaction. All right, all right. You, you could spend a lot of time talking about the reaction, and analyzing the reaction, and talking, you know, with other people about the reaction, and, and yet it's really, I think we're hearing it, it's a great step to bring it inward, and that's what Sue was doing, say, okay, then we bring it in, you say, well, what's really going on? I must have made a decision deep inside that was not with the Holy Spirit for there to be such a reaction. And so we might say, first you spot the reaction, next you bring it inward, bring it really deep inward to, okay, I've got a decision going on. I'm deciding for this. I'm deciding for exactly the way that I'm feeling. Nobody's pushing my button, nobody's really making me feel this way. There's nothing outside of me that's determining how I'm feeling. It's a decision. And once you can bring it in to that point, of seeing that it's a decision, then you're so close to letting it go. You know, you can't really let it go when it's still out there as a reaction, when it still seems to involve uh, a Christian or a talk about a, a woman breastfeeding an eight-year-old or something. When it's out there, there's no hope uh, at that point. It's, it's twice removed from the correction, and, and the ego is quite happy with just the reaction. But then when you bring it into that point, and, and you really get in touch as Suze was, with this, I'm, I must feel that I'm unworthy of love, you know, that, that's getting down to the core of it, right there, Un, unprotected, unmasked, you know, really looking at what that is. But I've chosen to leave love, and it doesn't really matter whatever the reaction was, it can be a wide range of reactions, but it starts with, with that decision. So, you know, when we're, we're getting down here, Frank's really saying, let's get to the, let's hit the nail on the head, let's get to the core of it. That once you can get it inward to the point of just seeing that it's a, it's a mistaken decision that you've made, that's when you finally got it to the position where you can let it go, where you can give it over to the Holy Spirit. You can't give over a reaction that you think is still outside of yourself. The Holy Spirit's not going to come out into the world on a search and destroy you. And what? Let's find this woman. Where, where is she? What's her address? <laughs> Let's call her on the cell phone. We'll pass the phone around. Everybody will give her, tell her what for. What are you breastfeeding at an eight-year-old for? Get out, stop it. You're going to do damage. You know, blah, 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 blah. This child will be hurt for... No, no. Holy Spirit's not going to do that. You know? Or you're, you're even feeling, Let's call Christian right now. Let's tell him. You know? You know, it's, or whatever, you know, we're not really going to find a solution if we look at trying to, you know, change something in form, like that old TV thing, you know, do not adjust your set. <laughs> problem, you know, when they first invented TV, they had problems with television, the problem is not in your set. They were having trouble broadcasting, but we can apply it to the spiritual journey. Make no, do not touch the knob on, on the TV, do not touch the remote. The problem is not in your set. It's a setup. Uh, ego has made a big, giant setup, and it's the, the mesmerism is so thick that it's easy to forget that it's a big setup. Or there's that movie Fifty First Dates, you know, that I showed a clip from, where you know she has short-term memory problem, and and she keeps thinking it's the same day over and over. And she keeps playing, and then and then she gets, you know, her her dad and her her brother. They all play along, you know, as if they adapt to her distorted perception. That it's the same day, 
that's people pleasing to the max, you know. Uh, paint, painting walls white every day, rewrapping re a, a gift, you know, getting a whole freezer full of pineapples. Just so she, when she says, "Let's go shopping for the pineapple," oh, we've already got one. Yeah, got it out of the freezer again, and you know, let's watch the Sixth Sense. Okay, like for the for the hundredth, two hundredth time, you know, watching the same movie over and over. And you can start to see that same dynamic played out in your lives, in your relationships, when you, when you kind of say, oh, mom's just that way. You got to be real careful and gentle with mom, you know, because she's just this way. You know, you'll adapt and twist things around just so you won't, you know, disturb the, the beast, <laughs> you know. Uh, we don't want the explosion when mom or dad, their anger comes up, so we'll just walk on eggshells very carefully. And then when you start to do that with interpersonal relationships with your partner, it gets really dangerous when you, if you have an explosive partner and you just kind of tiptoe around, you know, there's stress that builds up. You, know, you want to shine and be free and splash and be spontaneous and you're like walking very carefully, you know, not to disturb the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Run away. You know. So, so this, these dynamics are all like really important for us to get into because this people pleasing it's so sneaky. You think you're being sweet and kind and nice, and you're you're not really being sweet and kind and nice. You're, you're falling into the ego's version of sweet and kind and nice, and you'll pay the price at some point uh, when this unconscious guilt just comes up into awareness like the Loch Ness Monster just pops its head up and, and then it's like oh I need a therapist <laughs> I need something you know it you know it, it gets it's very intense to do that well if we just go over the steps again first you have to to look at the projection I mean, if you went into any good psychotherapist the psychotherapist wouldn't say, the world's not real. I mean, the, it would be, I want my money back, uh, uh, you're being too rude to me. <laughs> uh, if you would go into a psychotherapist and they would say that. You know, or even to put it more in psychological terms, if you walked into a psychotherapist and the psychotherapist said, you are completely delusional and completely insane and you, have, you are completely mistaken. Again, okay, give me my money back, uh, that's too, no, that's not helpful. But, but it's interesting, the Holy Spirit, like a good psychotherapist, has got to join with everyone who comes in, and mainly through their attitude, uh, teach what they would learn, which is that, that we really are free when we are tuned into our source, when we're tuned into Spirit, we are free, and we are not deluded, and we are not uh, at the mercy of anything or anyone, or the ego. So, so you might say the advanced psychotherapist is, is peaceful, 